Okay, so we're gonna go from an airplane manufacturer to the first of two airlines. Oh, in a moment though, there was a jacket. Uh, another thing that, that perhaps, perhaps I, I would have seen airline APIs, uh, but uh, to see an entire track essentially made up of them is uh, pretty surprising to me. Stein, here to talk about the business of APIs. That All is right. for you. Yes, thank you very much. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so um, I'd like to start with just a sort of a, a quiz in the crowd. If you can just uh, pull up your hands if you uh, work from a, a technological perspective, uh, IT, engineering, or whatever. Just wait a second, I want to make a picture, then I can count afterwards, huh? then we can do a proper uh, percentage uh, element. And then when you work from business perspective, so that's a few less, but still quite okay, so I'm happy with that. And then a third question, that's also for my manager, if you can just wave a bit while I make this picture. Three, two, one, hey! All right, thank you very much. Um, yes, I'm here to talk about the business of APIs, and we have seen many presentations already on API strategy and how it should align to uh, your gateways and whatever you have. But what is also important is when you look into this strategy that it sort of aligns with what your commercial or your business strategy actually is. And uh, within Air France KLM, we have, of course, multiple business divisions and domains working uh, already with APIs. Some of them are starting up, like engineering and maintenance, working with, for example, Airbus, which you just saw. Um, other, uh, other domains, uh, like commercial passenger, where I'm working, uh, is already quite advanced, and we're happy to share our story today. So, when the topic here is uh, from legacy to agile, the first thing I thought immediately, well, in uh, Europe, Air France, KLM, Lufthansa, uh, British Airways are still considered to be the legacy carriers, uh, legacy carriers of Europe. And of course, legacy means on the one hand, you're quite old, but maybe also some other processes might be a bit legacy, legacy there. So when you think of KLM, for example, we celebrated this year that we were 100 year, Air France 85, so also quite old, and these are the, like the nice pictures that we can show then. Eh? Like 100 years ago, we were already taking care of our customers. And we, we, we made sure that you felt really, that you felt coming home when you arrived in the Netherlands or in France. Um, but meanwhile, things changed. Eh? We had the digitization of many elements, um, and on the one hand, this made quite some improvements, but on the other hand, it also created all kinds of new issues, because what do you develop, how do you develop, why, always trying to keep the customer in mind. And of course, eh, this is a bit of the ID that we still have of an airline, eh? people working for the airline, bursers, pilots, cabin crew, gate agents, etc. Eh? the people you actually talk to when you are flying, um, leaving the country, coming home, and sometimes they have a digital device, but most of the time you still have this sort of old-fashioned idea of they are just flying all the time, 10 hours from Amsterdam to uh, America, whatever. But in the end, of course, lots of technology is helping us there. Well, thinking of legacy, we still have this idea in mind as well. You might be waiting, they are typing something, yeah, I don't have an ID, but it keeps on going and going and going. And, well, when I started five years ago at, uh, at KLM, I also had this idea, what, 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 what systems do we have? I, of course, knew the website and the mobile app, but then looking into the systems I saw, I saw this, and I thought, whoa, this is like MS-DOS that I vaguely remember. And I actually learned that it was just a new version of this application. So they were very proud of showing me what we, what we changed and updated. So also in Legacy, we could improve a lot with regards to uh, yeah, going, going further and trying to make things customer friendly. And customers uh, from an airline perspective are many, because on the one hand, we have the flying customer, and I'm working for commercial passenger, so that's one part of, of our company, but we also have employees that are a customer because they are using an application. Uh, we are, like this one, for example, to change your seat. Uh, or we have cargo uh, uh, shipment uh, companies that are using us uh, to, to ship cargo from one to another uh, uh, location. So there are all kinds of customers, and 
One of the goals of Air France KLM is, of course, to be as customer-centric as possible. Well, what does that mean? We want to make sure that we offer the best thing, something that you really like, not just something we want to sell to you. Of course, that's a nice side thing. Uh, at the right time, in the right place, um, and at the right moment, eh? because it's not just the timing, but it's also when you actually need it. And looking into that, um, we have this beautiful strategy, but of course, that's one thing. I can, of course, talk about, yes, we need to be there, etc. but I also want to show that we actually did these things and that we, thanks to APIs, and that's, of course, where the story leads to, we could execute the strategy and show that we have customer-centric elements. On the one hand, looking back five years ago, uh, just before I started at KLM, um, the API program started in our company. And uh, at that moment, there were two uh, goals. On the one hand, we wanted to digitize the processes, we had many processes around our airline for the customers, and we want to make sure that they were all digitized. So, and there was a second element that we could align all the touch points that we were having. Because we had Air France, KLM, websites, mobile applications, kiosk applications, social media started just uh, came looking around the corner. We had ID of smartwatches five years ago, and three, four years ago there were more. We wanted to make sure that everyone every touch point, every customer would see the same information, every touch point was showing the same information. And APIs could solve this, because then there was one interface that all these applications were talking to. On the one hand, um, it would digitize these processes, and on the other hand, we could sh show the same information. And that, that would make a lot of sense, because some airline processes are quite, yeah, quite stressful. If you have to check in, you have to make sure that you show the right, uh, sh share the right information, your passport, your ID card. When you're booking a flight nowadays, you, may, you have quite a process where you have to make sure that you're bringing enough baggage, did you have to pay extra, whatever. And when we talk about low-cost carriers, for example, it's even getting worse because if you didn't print your boarding pass or don't have it on your mobile phone, you have to pay like 50 or 60 euros or whatever. So airline uh, business and processes quite stressful for the customers. So we wanted to make sure, on the one hand, with the customer centricity in mind, to make sure that we could yeah, sort of ease you into, into these processes. One example, the check-in process. For you, it's some, we have to, when you check in, it's giving some information in an app or on a website, but in the end, there are quite some, some elements back to it. There are some services going to different backends, checking, for example, if your booking is a valid booking. Next step is an eligibility check. Are you actually allowed to check in? Then we go for some advanced passenger information, which is also API. Interesting that we might have had an API API, but we just called it the check-in API. Um, where you have to give your passport documentation or uh, ID card, visa, whatever. Then we have to show you some dangerous goods you're not allowed to bring on the plane. Next to that, you have to agree to the terms and conditions. And then finally, there it is, the boarding pass. And the most important thing, actually, people want to do immediately after that, change your seat. <laughs> so this check-in process is quite complex. And we started off with having different services going to our backends. And every front end, every channel, touch point was actually building in these different services in a row. And we found out that sometimes things went right, sometimes they forgot one or two steps or elements into a step. All kinds of business logic that you have to build in. You're only allowed to do an eligibility check when the PNR is uh, of our own backend and not from another backend, et cetera, et cetera. So to avoid this, we could build with an API. On the one hand, this process, so every front end would show the same process. And on the other hand, they would also show the same information. So if your customer was going to the Air France website or the KLM mobile app or to a kiosk at the CDG airport, the process would always be the same. So that would also make it easier for the customer to recognize these steps. So that is only one step in the customer journey, checking in for your flight. And when you look at the full customer journey at Air France KLM, and we start with uh, searching for your flight, you are booking it, preparing for your flight, like check-in, for example, checking in, making sure you know what uh, baggage you can bring, etc. Transport to the airport, you have your flight, you might have a, uh, a transfer, go for your next flight. You arrive, transport to your stay, most of the time you fly back home, and then you can look back at your, uh, at your, yeah, at your holiday, business trip, or whatever. Well, for every step in this uh, customer journey, we actually uh, added all kinds of APIs. So you have the check-in API, that I just explained. We have an order API where you can book uh, your ticket. Um, and all these processes, uh, we try to 
yeah, to uh, sort of accommodate with an API. And depending on the touch point, you might have um, these processes covered for the touch point. So the, the blue web, uh, the website that we have from Air France and KLM or the mobile app has actually all these elements, all these APIs included. Of course, uh, there are just some examples here around the customer, customer API, the Flying Blue API with your Flying Blue information, a lounge API tells you whether you're allowed to access the lounge, etc. There are many APIs. Uh, for commercial, we have about 25 APIs across the customer journey at the moment. And when you dive into it, you see two elements that are very important. On the one hand, we have lots of interesting customer information, sort of personalized APIs. When you use the order API, when you're logged in, we can immediately show you your preferred payment method. Or when you are checking in, we will include the travel documents that you stored in your profile. So all these elements, we try to ease the process again and customize or personalize your, your journey. And next to that, the airport. A very stressful moment in your journey because you need to be on time. You hope that there's no strike getting there even. Um, when you are there, are you at the right gate? Is the flight on time? Uh, of course, as soon as people start standing in line, everyone who wants to stand in line, will you make it? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So many APIs are there to improve the customer experience at the airport. And that goes from the one hand to the, 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 the basic, thi basic things like changing your seat, getting a gate update, et cetera, but also more specific with regards to disruptions that you, for example, can change a flight when your flight is canceled instead of just waiting for a back office to change your flight, et cetera. So some examples, for example, in the booking flow, you might have looked up a few flights uh, but did not finish the booking via our systems and the APIs, we can give you a sort of a heads up, hey, do you still want to finish your booking? And then continue the booking where you left off and you can pay for it and hopefully we will earn some money. Another example, um, not sure if the video is working, yes it is, is a compensation. When your flight is cancelled or your flight is delayed, we will offer you a compensation. Normally you have to stand in line with a gate agent that is writing very quickly that you get five euros to spend at the airport, which is half a drink or something like that. Um, but now we did it digitally, thanks to the API, the airport compensation API, uh, tactically uh, named. Um, you get, this, uh, to get the possibility to just change your boarding pass into this voucher and you can just go to every shop, show your boarding pass, they scan it and you get for a few euros, uh, five to ten or whatever. Uh, you can get a drink or a snack, etc., to comfort you while waiting for your new flight or your delayed flight. So also there, uh, more into kind, kinds of the disruption. Next to that, also with regards to uh, personalization, our next best action API that sort of tells you what would be the best next step in your journey. On the one hand, we can of course show you you need to check in uh, or uh, uh, please update your profile. But on the other hand, we can also look into the, your travel history, compare it to other sales that were done and offer you uh, a, a, special, uh, a special discount on, for example, baggage, as you can see here. But that same API, can not only use it in a B2C context, eh? so in a customer context. We can also use it from a gate agent perspective. So when you go to the gate and ask, hey, are there any interesting seats for me? They can look up your, uh, your flight and immediately see, hey, there is a possibility to upgrade to the business class. And that show, uh, give you the opportunity either to pay with miles even, the flying blue miles, so you can also get rid of those things. And finally, uh, for the social agents that are working uh, in Salesforce, eh? when you contact KLM or Air France via um, via Facebook, Twitter or whatever, they also have the same opportunity to when there is a, a customer conversation going on to offer you this option, hey, do you want to change your seat, upgrade to a certain uh, extra baggage or whatever. Well, that's the part of trying to put the customer centric. And of course, uh, with these APIs, we, we found out the past five years, uh, we started with the mobile apps, and then the website joined in, the kiosk, and most of our applications are almost using all APIs that we have. But that's only for the Air France KLM applications. And when you, do, when you look into the bigger picture, there are many other um, yeah, areas around us that have way more customers. And we found out that our APIs actually meant for internal use, we're also we could also use them, that means two minutes? Okay, <laughs> I'll speed up. Um, our internal APIs could also be used externally. 
And then we thought, yeah, that's the open API program that we started. And it's not only that we just open up every API, it's more like we're open for business. So if you have an interesting offer, or we have partners that we already know and have an idea of how to improve customer experience and customer centricity, well, we're open there and we can help you with our APIs. So some examples um, from our own applications, we went to different uh, partners there, and I'll just show a few ex uh, examples. On the one hand, uh, we, we improved the Delta che uh, the check-in with Delta because, because of legacy systems, airport, airport bound backends, uh, people flying to Atlanta from Amsterdam or CD, uh, Paris, they could not check in in the Delta app. Well, connecting the APIs, th these things were making po made possible. Google Flights is consuming our booking API, so you can book your flights immediately in Google Flights. We did an integration with Aqua Hotels, where the loyalty program of Aqua was connected to our Flying Blue uh, loyalty program via APIs, where you can earn miles while sleeping in Aqua and earn points while flying with KLM, which is quite a cool uh, concept, and of course, transfer miles when necessary. Um, and you can, of course, paying with miles. And miles is sort of a virtual currency that you can use everywhere. And we just opened a new lounge in the, the Amsterdam airport. Uh, there is a very fancy and interesting, re nice restaurant. Uh, and there you can pay with your miles. So instead of paying euros, you can pay with miles. So to wrap up, APIs made for us the execution of a strategy. Uh, they, they were the linking pin first to digitize the processes and align all the data and content that we had. And next to that, we could open up. Uh, we could create value with APIs and also maintain this, uh, this value. And finally, yeah, it's really hard and competitive in the airline industry. Yeah? You can try to be faster, be older. Well, we're already one on the GSO, so that's not, not really uh, possible anymore. Be smarter, but the, the easy way go, to go forward is actually to open up, yeah? to, to show and share the data that we have and see uh, how other people can also use it. So. Summing up, we started with this customer-centric commercial strategy. With APIs, we could actually follow the full customer journey and try to make sure that all these difficult processes made, were made easy for the customer via our digital touch points. And finally, we could say yeah, we, we do something that, uh, that the customers really love and of course also earn some money with it because we are still a commercial company. And so the APIs drive innovation. Eh? They, they deliver fast and they deliver value and we have an increased reach and also more sales around the globe. So that's really cool. And I want to uh, finish off with, uh, with one question. So how do APIs drive innovation in your organization? And uh, thank you for your interest. We have time for about one question. Any, any hands? Am I missing it? Oh, there we are. While the microphone is getting there, please go to this website. We have two nice API positions open for the IT side of people here. I'll count your names and see your faces and find you on LinkedIn, so don't worry. Thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, that was uh, great. Uh, so I'm data driven, I work for XY. Um, and I have a question for you regarding metrics. What metrics do you look after internally and uh, to communicate about the API program internally and externally in terms of a success, whether it's dollars or, or API goals or uh, savings, uh, new sales, how, how do you yeah, that's very How do you bridge the gap with the business? Yeah. So on the one hand, we can, uh, luckily we have some data on, on sales, etc. So the integrators that actually used uh, our APIs for selling tickets, we can see some, some figures on that. So yes, we have those data. But on the other hand, for some, uh, some parts uh, of, our, of our integration landscape only allows us to, t to talk about calls. And of course, you can, uh, when you talk with the check-in API, from, uh, from, for example, Delta uh, perspective, you can get a 200 OK uh, response, which is, of course, great. So we see Delta as talking to us, but every response might be you're not allowed to check in, which is not a good response, of course. So the next step, and that's actually where we're working on the next few months, is actually dive into the payload and actually also extract that from the API. Of course, the, API, the, the product teams, the API teams themselves, have their own way of metrics, and they have a bit more insights into these elements, but they did not take too much time into that, because until now, we had our own 
channels and applications consuming the API, they had their analytics in the front end and they could say, hey, 75% uh, of the people uh, for this flight were checked in via this website or via the app, etc. But now we are sharing the APIs with, our pa with partners, we have to look into that and also see that we can see that we can get the same data. And of course, looking into the API with the amount of calls and how the calls are made is one thing, but the next step is to look into the payload and get the real business metrics. So thanks for your question, and we're working on that. All right. Thanks again, Stein. Thank you very much.